Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're here to celebrate Mr. Jim Stewart and as promised here is a video dedicated to my favorite James Stewart films. This is another one of those videos that I feel is long overdue for me because I've been wanting to discuss the work of Jim Stewart for a very long time. Now this video will be a little bit different from the usual format of me discussing my five favorite films simply because that was too short a number for me to be able to talk about the films again that I love of Jim Stewart. So what I chose to do in this case was to use the format of a post that Keisha from the blog Cinema Cities used which was great, which was a lot of fun to read and I also thought it introduced different categories for me to discuss movies that I like and different aspects of his filmography that I couldn't do if I just talked about five films as I said before. So that essentially what I'll do, I'll take the categories that Keisha used in her blog post. Needless to say that I will leave a link down below to her blog post so that you can read it. So I highly encourage you to do so if you also love Jim Stewart. She had a brilliant idea, I feel, and I wanted to share that with you and to follow along in this video in case you also want to share your picks in the comments down below as per usual. So let's begin. Let's celebrate the wonderful life and the wonderful wonderful career of Jim Stewart. Yeah, I wanted to start by sharing that to me, again, much of his greatness came from that capacity to be honest, to give it all in a performance. It was also due to his charm, but also to his capacity to evolve as times were changing and to incorporate all that in his performances. Again, that is, in my opinion, one of the greatest assets of Jim Stewart's career and why he still today remains one of the quintessential Hollywood actors and why he left such an indelible mark as a performer and also as a human being. So after all this ramble, which I couldn't help myself, I'll start by discussing the first category, so to speak, of today's video. And it's one again that Keisha from Cinema Cities came up with. And it is the most underrated film of Jim Stewart's career. And in my opinion, it has to be Destry Rides Again, a film released in 1939 and directed by George Marshall. To me, this has to be one of his most, if not the most, underrated film of again Jim Stewart career and I think mainly because again it was released the same year 1939 in which Mr. Smith Goes to Washington was released and I feel it tends to get overshadowed by that also because it is a western one that has bits of screwball comedy in it and perhaps his later westerns the ones he made with Anthony Mann get more recognition and are more known what is curious to me in relation to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington is that his character in Destry Rides Again is also called Jefferson so whereas in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington his character's name is Jefferson Smith. In Destry Rides Again, his character's name is Thomas Jefferson Destry. So isn't that quite a coincidence for two of his films released in 1939? But I think it reveals a lot about the qualities that James Stewart embodied during this 
this period of his career. I feel that it's no coincidence again that both characters are named Jefferson. And in both cases, in both films, in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and in Destry Rides Again, his characters, they embodied again certain qualities, certain moral qualities, and certain ways to resolve conflict in a very earnest, very honest, non-violent way. Destry Rides Again was also the first pairing of Jimmy Stewart and Marlene Dietrich, which is a pairing that feels a little bit odd beforehand, but when you watch the film and you see the chemistry and you see the way they two interact and you see again his incredible charm. As I read too, the character Tom Destry was based on a novel by the same title by Max Brand, but the story seems to be really different or have little to do with the novel. It is, as I said before, a mix of a western and still some remnants of the screwball comedies that were so prevalent during the 30s and the 40s. And if you haven't watched yet Destry Rides Again, I highly encourage you to do so for the chemistry, as I mentioned, of Jim Stewart and Marlene Dietrich, for the story, for the character that Jim Stewart plays, and also for the cast, which includes Brian Donlevy, Una Merkel, Misha Auer, Alan Jenkins, Jack Carson, and Samuel Hintz, who would later play the father of Jim Stewart in in none other than It's a Wonderful Life, playing a very different character in this movie. Next up, we move on to his best acting effort. And to me, the film that best fits this category or this title has to be precisely Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Not only in terms of the amazing performance that Jim Stewart gives, but also for the length he went to make it believable. Because there is a sequence in which he appears talking and talking for hours non-stop and as I found out through an interview in order as I said before to make this believable he went to a chemist and asked for a solution to make his voice sound gruff just as though his throat was sore putting his health his voice at risk for this part and in my opinion if that's not the best effort for a part I don't know what it is. He certainly gave one of the greatest performances in his career. This is also, incidentally, another one of my favorite films, not only for his performance, but also because Gene Arthur appears in it, as I mentioned in a previous video discussing my favorite films with Gene Arthur. A movie that I also read was initially for Gary Cooper, but after watching Jimmy Stewart in a particular scene in the film Navy Blue and Gold, released in 19. 37, he immediately knew that he wanted him for the part. And thank goodness for Frank Capra's intuition here. And now I move on to my favorite early role of Jim Stewart's career. And for me, this has to be a film like Rosemary, in which he plays a very small part in an against type kind of role, but one that really stands out. The film, in case you don't know, was released in 1936, and it was the second pairing of the very popular popular musical couple formed by Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy. And this is also, incidentally, one of my favorite films of Nelson Eddy and Jeanette MacDonald. The music is fantastic, their chemistry is off the charts, but also the part of Jimmy Stewart playing Jeanette MacDonald's brother gives it that extra touch but even with a very small part he proves again that he had very good chemistry with janet mcdonald he usually had very good chemistry with all his leading actresses and also with other actors as we'll discuss later on which makes rosemary in my opinion a really worth watching musical even for those who are not fans or who are not that really into janet mcdonald and nelson eddie's musicals and as for for my favorite later role of his career, this certainly has to be, in my case, Anatomy of a Murder. This is a movie that I have discussed very recently in a video dedicated to courtroom scenes, so I won't go over all that again. I will just say, in order to focus on Jim Stewart's part in this film, that he is really one of the reasons why I really appreciate and why I really love this film so much, precisely because of his acting and the kind of role he plays in Anatomy of a Murder. Again, very different from the roles that I was used to seeing him 
him play something that as I said is more and more fascinating as you watch his films from the 50s and the 60s this is a movie that besides being black and white it plays a lot with the gray areas of this procedure that all these actors and actresses are a part of and there are a lot of things that are unclear in terms of what happens in this film and in terms of the trial and james stewart just plays his part accordingly he is not again your typical hero he plays also a lawyer that is far from being in his prime and once again along with terrific actors that i admire like eve arden and lee remick ben gazzara lee jacob or arthur o'connell this is a very unique film that really surprised me when i watched it in its entirety for the first time a couple of years ago and it has remained a favorite as for my favorite biopic role I have to coincide here with Keisha's post because it is also for me the Glenn Miller story released in 1954 and directed by Anthony Mann. Even though it has been a long time since I've seen the Stratton story, the first pairing of Jim Stewart with June Allison, and I haven't seen, I have to confess, The Spirit of St. Louis yet, in which he plays Charles Lindbergh, the Glenn Miller story in my case has a more sentimental meaning because it was precisely Glenn Miller's songs and music that my grandparents fell in love to and fell in love with so the fact that this film was based on Glenn Miller's life and his music and his songs has a very very important sentimental meaning for me and also the fact that he was again with Jen Allison another case of him having fantastic chemistry with his co-star and also seeing Jimmy Stewart in this musical context with him playing different instruments the fact that he also played in real life the accordion and the piano I don't know it's really funny it's heartwarming for me so definitely my favorite biopic of his career has to be the Glenn Miller story and now we move on to different genres in which Jim Stewart left an indelible mark and we'll start with my favorite romance and this one has to be also for one of my all-time favorite Jim Stewart films which is none other than the shop around the corner pairing him with Margaret Sullivan in one of their greatest I think on-screen pairings as many of you would know this film was released in 1940 and it was directed by none other than Ernst Lubitsch and it is in my opinion even though the story has been remade in different movies like in the good old summertime and many years later as you also know in a movie like you've got mail but I think that in any case it has one of the most brilliant scripts and dialogues that have ever been written for the screen and proof of that is that some parts of the dialogue are exactly the same in all the movies and I think that's a testament to how well dialogues were written and how lovely the story is to me it's pure sensitivity as I said I love as per usual the cast down to the last actor the actor that plays Rudy who also appeared incidentally in the good old summertime melts my heart every time and I will be moved to tears every time. As for my favorite Jim Stewart's mystery, Rope has to be for me the one that fits best this category. It is also my personal favorite Jim Stewart Alfred Hitchcock collaboration and was also incidentally the first color film for both of them. Rope is primarily known for being a rather experimental film for Hitchcock intending to be shown and to be shot in real time. As many of you would know as well, it was filmed in a specifically designed stage and and its editing also used several tricks for it to be a continuous shooting and a continuous experience for audiences avoiding making conventional cuts. I am also aware that out of all the movies that Jimmy Stewart and Alfred Hitchcock made together, I think this one for Jimmy was his least favorite. He felt I think that he was miscast but to me on the contrary maybe cast against type but he is perfect for he could do almost anything in my opinion and he gets away really well in this case for me again with this very sordid very dark very black humor that the movie has it is yet again a very unique film but for some reason it is a fascinating movie for me not only for the way it was shot but also for the way it is 
presented, the fact that it was based on a play. This one was based also on a real murder case that also inspired the movie Compulsion released in 1959. And in my opinion, Jimmy Stewart precisely also for his persona was very good to convey the message of rope. Because even though Alfred Hitchcock, I feel, never made a very direct message film, especially during the war, perhaps with the exception of foreign correspondent, but it is my impression that rope has some sort of at least discussion or exposure of how certain ideas and theories, if taken too far, can be extremely dangerous. And that is why I think precisely casting someone like Jim Stewart is very effective in order to realize again the danger and the consequences and the implications of again these theories and that is why I think the impact of its ending is even greater because Jim Stewart is in the film and I also appreciate him in tackling subjects and perhaps personalities that other actors certainly of his era wouldn't approach. So that's why Rope remains one of my favorite Jimmy Stewart films. As for my favorite western, a lot of options here, but I have to go also for The Naked Spur. This was, if I'm not mistaken, the fourth or the fifth Anthony Mann Jimmy Stewart collaboration. It was released in 1953 and to me is one of the most fascinating westerns that he ever made. I also love the cast of this film. The fact that Robert Ryan is in the movie even makes it more appealing to me, even darker. But we also have Janet Lee, Ralph Meeker, and Millard Mitchell. In this western, really all the parts show different attitudes that are very distant from our ideal attitudes. So I feel that the western, that this western is particularly bleak in that regard, but at the same time, it also shows humanity in the part of Janet Lee, and it also has towards the end a very moving very vulnerable moment for Jimmy Stewart so again this is a film that moves me that fascinates me also it is very dark even though it takes place in this amazing landscape and it captures some of Jim Stewart's most vulnerable, most repressed, most explosive moments on screen. And that is why I love The Naked Spur so much because it is a very tense Western with wonderful acting and wonderful directing. As for my favorite actor-director collaboration, it is another instance in which I have lots of options here. But in my opinion, if I have to go by feeling by sentiment, I have to choose the collaborations between Frank Capra and Jimmy Stewart, even though I also deeply admired, as I just said, Anthony Mann's movies and also Alfred Hitchcock's. But my heart belongs to some Frank Capra movies that are also very important films, I feel, within Jimmy Stewart's filmography, which are It's a Wonderful Life, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and You Can't Take It With You. And I'm also choosing Frank Capra, Jimmy Stewart collaborations collaborations because I think that on the one hand, as I said before, Frank Capra was the first to notice the potential, the range that Jimmy Stewart had and he also gave him more substantial roles, really impactful roles that became immediately associated with him. So he had that vision, Frank Capra had that vision to see Jimmy Stewart playing these very key characters within his career. He also offered him a part like George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life upon his return from World War II. Also a very key and very complex character to play that I think none other than Jimmy Stewart could have played so brilliantly. That is why to me it is the more powerful, encompassing collaboration that Jimmy Stewart had as an actor. As for my favorite co-stars, this has to be one of the hardest categories because as I said, the cast in James Stewart films was fantastic and he also almost always had chemistry, great chemistry with everyone he worked with. I particularly love, as I said, the cast of The Shop Around the Corner or You Can't Take It With You. But in my case as well, I have to highlight the co 
co-stars that Jim Stewart had in The Philadelphia Story. This was one of the films, initial films, that really captured my attention in terms of the acting and the charm of Jim Stewart. And it has to do a lot with his interactions with Catherine Hepburn, with Ruth Hussey, and particularly with Cary Grant in this film. The side of him he presents in this film, he is rather playful but cynical and also super charming and certainly one that balances so well with powerhouses like Catherine Hepburn, Cary Grant and also Ruth Hussey, Roland Young, Mary Nash or Virginia Widler. Speaking about dialogues, The Philadelphia Story also has terrific dialogues and some of my favorites really are of Jimmy Stewart, particularly during the first half of the film. I really adore it. That is why if I have to choose favorite co-stars for Jimmy Stewart, I always also have in mind The Philadelphia Story. My favorite performance of Jimmy Stewart has to be the one in It's a Wonderful Life as George Bailey. I feel one of his most quintessential performances, perhaps with the exception of Harvey, but as I said in many videos and as I've shared in many videos, It's a Wonderful Life. It is a very important film to me, very close to my heart, and that is why it's very difficult for me to choose any other part but George Bailey. It has had a great influence in my life, not only the movie, but specifically the part of George Bailey and the way that Jimmy Stewart plays it. And it's still a movie that I come back to regularly. And so my favorite movie overall of Jim Stewart's career is once more, It's a Wonderful Life. I know I'm repeating myself a lot towards the end of this video but it is what it is I mean I love this movie I love James Stewart I love George Bailey so I won't bother you with it any longer this was the last category for today's video and I hope that you enjoyed it as I said at the beginning this was an opportunity for me to talk about more films and different aspects of James Stewart's career but there are many more movies that he made and that perhaps are your favorites too so as always feel free to share your thoughts down below share your favorite Jim Stewart films and as I said also at the beginning of this video I will leave a link to Keisha's post to the original idea for this categories that I highly encourage you to read I really coincide with many of her answers so in any case thank you so much for watching as always thank you so much for sharing the love for classic movies and once again take care stay safe and see you all soon with my next video bye